Which job is a lot less fun than most people expect? Oh my gosh, build a bear. Weirdest and most frustrating thing. Granted I didn't make it a super long time in the job and seeing kids so happy is great. But they are really strict and the bad times get pretty bad. I imagine that store is just parents with sticker shock trying to talk their kids into cheaper options. You go in to do the little $35 bear, and walk out $150 later with a bear in a full tuxedo with a skateboard and a construction helmet. I'm a forensic scientist and it's literally the only thing people ask me about on dating apps. It's very technical work and it's extremely routine. Professional photographer. Not like hobbyist, but business owning photographer. Sucks the love right out of your work. Because you started the business to take pictures. Then Karen doesn't like the way she looks in one of them so she wants the whole set for free plus a reshoot for free plus those images for free. Then the two high school kids getting into a very ill-advised marriage at exactly 18 years old wants to book you for their wedding but their budget is only $50. Then Karen calls back because she loves your work and wants to pay for another shoot, but only if you agree to do her friend's daughter's destination wedding for free. And then you get some entitled mom who wants you to photograph every day of her newborn's first year of life for $100. I went back to being a hobbyist. Barnes & Noble, your job has literally nothing to do with books and it obviously attracts a lot of that type, myself included. My younger sister worked in the cafe for a long time. She said it was really frustrating, especially since they sold Starbucks coffee but weren't an actual Starbucks store so people would complain about not taking their gift slash loyalty cards or minor variations in the drink or pastry menu. That and making espresso drinks for people's five-year-olds just felt really slimy. Park Ranger. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but a lot of days it was less talk about cool animals while wearing your ranger hat and more the toilets are overflowing again. Go clean the septic tank filter and stir the tank with a shovel. With a little bit of hey there's a methed out guy down by the bridge, can you convince him to leave without killing anyone? All for the low price of $26k slash year with a college degree. I do closed captioning. While I joke that yes, I get paid to watch TV, it's actually very tedious. And if you don't actually enjoy the programming you're being forced to watch something you don't care for. Or worse, if it's something I do enjoy like a long form drama. We usually chop those up into 15 minute increments and split between everyone so I only see chunks and not always even in order it actually ruins the show for me. I can imagine it's tedious, my partner corrects YouTube videos sometimes and that takes so long. As a deaf person, I really appreciate captions, so thank you for doing what you do. Working in a flower shop. It's just like any other retail job, but people constantly tell you how fun your job must be. Also helping grieving families chose funeral flowers is not fun. I'm a marine biologist. I spent the last week measuring defrosted fish heads. The sea was angry that day. Well I'm a scientist. I don't know if people usually think of that career as fun, but I think people think it's a lot more eureka. And a lot less this data has to be manually processed for 600 hours before I can analyze it. Not a specific job but traveling for work. I'm in tech and a lot of people starting out talk about wanting to go to customer sites and get out in the field. I love to travel for fun but it's hard to fit in the fun stuff when you have presentations and stuff to worry about and a lot of times your customers aren't in the fun cities anyway. I also think I prefer the stability and day-to-day -day schedule of traveling less frequently. TV slash film production. I think most people dream of being the actor, the director, the people making the creative decisions, or the big shot producer calling the shots, but most of the people working in TV and film production are part of a machine, the grind, working in a system, trying to climb up to wherever they want to be. Many don't get to actualize their creative vision. Also the industry can be project-based, job security concerns, and location limited, NY slash LA, maybe other cities. Pay can be low starting out too, though it can be good if you work way up. But I did enjoy the type of people that work these jobs, a little more fun than the business folk I work with now. A pediatric nurse, being a nurse for children and adolescents. Everyone in nursing school talks about how much they want to work with kids. The reality is that a pediatric nurse sees more cases of abuse and neglect than any other specialty. Doesn't matter where you are in a pediatric hospital, it's the thing you see most. I've seen so many DCS, Department of Child Services, caseworkers that I've gotten to know some of them and became acquaintances with them. Sure working with children and adolescents is great, but people don't think about the most essential piece of that puzzle which is their families. It doesn't matter how good of care you give to those kids, if you don't loop the parents into that care you may as well just not be doing anything for them. Video Editor. The more I do it the more I can't be ossed. Although not necessarily bad, beekeeping. Get used to the constant sound of buzzing during hive inspections slash swarm removals plus wearing the protective suit in hot, weather for hours on end, give or take the situation. 
Also, there appears to be a large number of beekeepers allergic to bees so EpiPens are a must. I always say the more fun it is to go somewhere the worse it is to work there like amusement parks and arcades. Honestly, every job that lots and lots of people really want to do sucks, mostly due to supply and demand. You're gonna be treated like crap, and if you complain you're gonna be fired because you're inherently replaceable, because there's thousands of people that would love to do your job for even less money than you are making. Baker. Coming into work at 3 quarters a.m. so you can have a 6 and baked goods is miserable. Demolition. Everyone wants to break crap with a sledgehammer. Everyone is tired of lifting that sledgehammer by 5 swings. Nobody wants to load the broken stuff into bags or a wheelbarrow and take it to the dumpster. Video game testing. I've been working in the game industry for 6 years now, and teaching for 2. Testing video games is thought to be just oh you just play games all day? La 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 but it's actually very specific and arduous. First of all, there are a bunch of testing methodologies such as load slash soak testing, white room testing, version testing to name a few, but the most common one is functionality testing. Functionality testing is so if I walk into that corner with a shotgun in my inventory, I can clip through the wall, but if I have my M16 in my inventory, I don't clip through. Paleontologist. You don't get to work with full dinosaur skeletons and do all kinds of awesome expeditions. You're mostly sitting at a desk looking at some pictures and logging stuff on your computer, maybe examining a fossil occasionally. If you're lucky you can go on a real dig, and OMG spend hours in the hot sun dusting off rocks. Acting. All the ones we see on TV and movies are the 0.0001% of incredibly lucky and talented people who manage to thrive in a hostile and overcrowded industry. And even when you are working, the actual job itself is 99% sitting on Apple crate and hot makeup waiting for some grips to move a lighting fixture. Then you say three lines over and over again for an hour, and then you rap. That was my experience as an extra. I waited all day for something to do and was given a role as a doorman but neglected to tell me anything else. Luckily I thought to open the door and it made it on screen but that was it. Being an extra in a movie. Now, it can be super fun, but a typical day on set wasn't what I thought it'd be when I started doing it. Often we have to get up at 3 or 4 in the morning to get to holding, and if you're a minute late to check in sometimes they'll kick you out. Then we sit around in holding with sometimes hundreds of other extras, and we're usually sitting there for a good 3 or 4 hours before they start telling us to get ready to film. During this time we go through long wardrobe, hair and makeup lines where they reuse clothes, unless you bring them yourself, brushes and makeup without washing them. When we finally get to film, it's often the same mundane motions over and over. Then we either get shuffled around or go back to holding. Several more hours pass, we go film again. Hungry? You get lunch 6 hours after your call time, and a usually meager supply of snacks. In between takes it's more standing around, often in heat or rain or we all get shuffled into cramped spaces to wait. Days on set are often more than 12 hours, and I know someone who had to be on set for 26 hours straight. They can legally hold you there until they declared filming is done, so don't make plans for the next day. Not to mention that you rarely see yourself in the final cut. I'm not trying to bash other background actors or the film industry because I've met lots of awesome people and gotten to do some pretty cool things. For example, interacting with main actors in scenes, running around in the woods with fake guns or being a zombie. But when I did my first job as a teen, I definitely thought it would be a lot different. Flight Attendant 1. You are on call, on reserve, forever, have a terrible schedule, have no life, and make no money for 5 to 10 years. 2. While you work for peanuts, you can't afford to use your flight benefits in any substantial way. 3. Then, when you finally get a chance to use your benefits for a trip, you have to fly standby which means you aren't guaranteed to get on the flight you want. 4. Then, if you do make it out of town you better have like a week off so you can make damn sure you're back in your base city in time for your next work shift. 5. Did I mention there is an act of US legislation, Railway Labor Act, that allows airlines to exploit so you don't get paid for certain work hours that you actually need to be working? For example, FAs don't get paid for boarding, or any time the plane is at the gate. Worst job ever. Google Street View Driver. You're all alone for 8 plus hours a day, can almost never take a break, need to constantly be on and focused, lest you crash the $25, 000 Subaru with $60, plus worth of camera equipment on it, you end up becoming an amateur meteorologist to keep track of weather patterns and cloud cover, and in my experience there are a lot of people who just get insanely upset at you, at Google, and the job in general for a wide variety of reasons. I enjoyed myself when I did it, but it was nowhere near as glamorous or fun as I or my friends and family assumed. Accountant. Everyone thinks it's all fun and number crunching. 
but the constant stream of women throwing their panties and wanting to bear your children is honestly exhausting. Being a character performer at Disney. Don't get me wrong, there are some amazing perks and truly magical moments. I know I'm super lucky and tons of people would love to be in my shoes. But the day-to-day -day work is exhausting in ways I never thought possible. Guests are ridiculously abusive. I've had things said and done to me I never would have imagined. The company isn't always great, it highly depends on your leadership. And there's so much focus on your body and face, good and bad, that it can be incredibly depressing and difficult emotionally. Plus, you have to accept that there's very little upward mobility. Most people grow out of it and it's rough to know that one day you'll get too old or too fat and you will have to start all over in a new career field. So you constantly are thinking either, one, what you're going to do when you leave, two, how you're going to keep yourself there. I personally knew it would be temporary, and I now only work there seasonally while I have a normal career. But Disney has a way of, you in. Working in a music store, musical instruments your days are spent listening to 50 different people play 50 different riffs poorly simultaneously, as if they're all putting on their own concert. Being a writer. I always thought it was my absolute dream job. But the only job I could get after college was working in a content mill as a blog writer. I used to work 70 hour weeks staring at the computer in a basement of an old bank writing, articles about the dangers of mold, fence cleaning, and why you need a commercial awning and the dream turned into a nightmare. While I still write occasionally, I am now working as a communications person so it is a bit less heavy. Trimming, I'd quite people think working with, is like working in the, Wonka factory, it's not. You literally get to make tiny cuts with sticky scissors for 8 hours. I have seen this question before and then it was Zookeeper at the top comment too. Nice. Anyways, there's this making of Frozen 2 mini docu. Most animators work weeks for a minute of animation of one character, if not less. At one point they decided to leave out a piece that one person had solely been working on. Must be crappy to be part of the credits without being able to say this is my part. Working at a Charles Dickens fair is. Interesting, but not incredibly fun. It is hard to stay in character, and people get so mad when they see the Alice in Wonderland area. Yeah, we know it's not Charles Dickens, but we can't have a kids play area in the world of Oliver Twist, okay? Seeing all this makes me feel like I don't want to have a job, but instead live off fish. As in catching and eating, it's my favorite thing to do, not the job of a fisherman. Lawyer, no it isn't like they show on TV. Hey, finally case is before the judge, crap the other party didn't show up. Next date that judge is given is 3 months away. I'll take things that involve customers for $800, Alex. Being a chef. All the flair and awesomeness they show on Vice and Netflix is far from what actually happens in the industry. It's not all fancy plates and tattooed slash cool haired guys doing their thing. It's a drug infested, law breaking work environment that only benefits the owners of a restaurant. Honest most real answer, any job slash every job. Until you've done it, you only have an idealized version of it in your head. Librarian. It's not all books and being quiet. There are also spreadsheets. Cybersecurity. Bro, the movies do us no justice. Hacking is not as fast nor is it as easy as the media makes it. It's a great field but you spend a lot of time researching or watching paint dry, especially in the gov side. Bar bouncer. Hours of tension and boredom interrupted by moments of adrenaline-fueled fear for your life. Then some, pukes cheap booze on your shoes. I write adult fanfiction as a side hustle. After a certain point it's just like writing a paper, except you have to keep thinking of different synonyms for A. Toys R Us. Not around anymore but I'm sure this applies to other toy stores, though few that they are. It is still retail and in this case it involves people's kids so of course the parents are twice as entitled to have to deal with. Zookeeper. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome to be around so many amazing animals and care for them. But the smells are ridiculously, insanely foul. I have a really strong stomach and it's still tough for me, we've had some interns quit over it. I was warned about the smells when getting into the field, but thought oh I've volunteered at animal shelters, I know what animal stink smells like. Nope. Not even close. Airport baggage handler. Yeah it's fun being able to see parts of an airport people wouldn't normally get to see and drive around the airfield in spare time to have a look at some planes, especially fancy private jets, but my god is it hard. Long hours, no social life because when you have days off you spend them catching lost sleep. Absolutely horrendous pay for hazardous work, in our training video they showed us the aftermath of someone who had been hit by an ATR 500 propeller and literally just smiled and said don't do this. Also what some people don't realize is that those bags don't magically appear on the plane. Some are loaded individually by hand, this is called loose load, and not into bins which is a lot easier. 
you could be stacking over 200 bags in a space so cramped you can't even be on your knees if you are tall. Some of the bags, cargo can weight over 30 kilograms so it is physically back-breaking work and on some days you may not even get a break on a 12-hour shift and yes that happens a lot. But the absolute worst part is the bodies. When someone is being sent home to be buried we are the ones who put that coffin into the hold and tie your loved one down and it's not easy for us. My most recent coffin was that of a two-year-old baby and my god I was in tears tying that coffin down in the hold. So next time you're packing for that vacation, remember we are down there. Video Game Tester You aren't spending your time playing completed fully realized games. You are playing the same level of a game over and over seeing if there are bugs. Managing a dog hotel. Breaking up dog fights, dogs doing things in the lobby and the occasional awful owners. After reading through this thread for 20 minutes I've concluded that every job sucks. Pilot you could lose your career with a single illness or injury, which could be happening to me soon. Not sure of the exact details but I have a friend who's done tons of hours and has been planning on being a pilot his whole life basically and was just recently diagnosed with epilepsy at age 20. I can't recall if he's ever actually had an episode slash seizure. I totally understand why he shouldn't fly anymore, but still unfortunate to lose something you're passionate about. Game master at an escape room. It's the same repetitive script, resetting the same stuff giving clues and hints about the same things. The patrons are often competitive families who argue, obnoxious impatient 13-year-olds, college students who have been drinking, idiots who break crap and touch crap that I specifically told them not to. They never remember your initial instructions. If something gets broken during one group, you have to hurry and fix it before the next group. Working at an amusement park. Hey, thanks for subscribing and liking. It really means a lot to me. While you are here, feel free to hop on over to the last video. See you there. Ronnie.